Places matter to us. Our identities are bound up with them. So when places that matter to us look like they're failing, it's important because it reflects back on us. The town centres are changing. They're not the vibrant centres they once were. In the UK, we do more online shopping than anywhere else in the world. A fifth of all retail sales are online now. But it's not just the internet that's affecting how much time and money we spend in our town centres. In around about a 10-year period, we've lost 50 million square yards of retail space. It's moved from our retail centres uh, to out-of-town centres like retail parks. That's about 800 football pitches full of shops. The trouble is, when this happens, it reduces the town's offer. And that means fewer shoppers are attracted. There's more and more in empty stores. It's a vicious cycle, if you like. And it can make our towns look unloved, uncared for, or even appear redundant. This is Nigel. Nigel is a businessman in Wrexham, which is a large town in North Wales. And Wrexham was struggling. And I started working with Nigel on a high street project because Nigel didn't want to just roll over and give up. And everywhere I've worked, every single town and city in the UK, there's lots of people like Nigel who really care about their town centres and ask, will we ever return to the days of the bustling high street? Well, the simple answer is no and yes. Town centres can be the beating hearts of our communities again, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be full of shoppers. It's not enough to just go back and understand what's made a town successful in the past. We have to understand what its function is now. And that's not as easy as it might sound. There's a huge array of factors that influence the success of our town centres. Our research has found 201, from the very macroeconomic, like the rate of inflation, to the intensely local, like how steep the high street is. But there's one factor that's universal, and that's that our town centres have been built around retail, around shopping. But retail is constantly changing. You might think that this quote perhaps came from the 1960s, and it's talking about the supermarket, or perhaps it's from the 1990s, and it's about the hypermarket. But it's actually from 1892, and it's discussing the, the rise of the department stores that were popping up all over US cities around the new trolley bus stops. Retail technology and societies are locked in ever-changing cycles, and sometimes retail reflects change, and sometimes it might drive it. The Trafford Centre, when it was built in 1997, was the second largest out-of-town shopping centre in the UK, and it decimated retail in nearby Altrincham. And its pulling power was even felt as far away here as Macclesfield, in tw 20 miles away. And when towns start to go into decline, there's a multitude of voices that start shouting for solutions. More shops, fairer rates and rents, uh, free and more available car parking. But all of these solutions really are focused on getting lost shoppers back into, back into town. Let me tell you about Home Firth. Home Firth is a town in Yorkshire Dale. It's a small town, the Yorkshire Dales in the north of England. And it attracts visitors, not only because it's associated with the long-running TV show Last of the Summer Wine, but also because it's located in the most beautiful countryside. But when the TV show stopped, visitor numbers dropped. And on top of this, there were other problems. There was not so much employment in a town centre anymore. More people were commuting. There was traffic congestion, the development of out-of-town and edge-of-town supermarkets. And these very complex issues were researched very thoroughly by Margaret and her action group, Keep Home First Special, and they came up with a range of solutions. But a firm of developers identified a much simpler problem in Home Firth. There just weren't enough shoppers. And so the solution was to refurbish the Riverside Shopping Centre, and it would launch a new era of shopping into the Home Valley. But quite how a windowless, 
soulless, out of proportion monster like this was going to turn around the fortunes of the town was never really explained. It certainly wasn't going to attract visitors who was coming to look at the scenery. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't actually create any employment. It didn't actually bring any retail, and let alone any, any shoppers. And it's easy to be duped by plans for new development, uh, by an opening of a, a big new store or a shiny new so supermarket. And it's the sort of things politicians get behind because it's, it's, you know, it's quite an easy thing to back and they can see to be doing something. But we found, actually, our research has found that shopping is the answer, is only a quarter, only a quarter of UK towns are shopping towns anymore. They're, that's their predominant function, to attract shoppers. And we know that they're shopping towns because they have a footfall profile that brings the shoppers in just before Christmas. So they're very flat throughout the year and they pop up, all the shoppers pop up just before Christmas. A small percentage of towns, about 5%, are holiday towns. And what they're doing is bringing in most of the activities through the summer months because people are going there to visit and stay uh, and have holidays. Then there's a third type of town called speciality towns where people are attracted to the culture, the scenery, the heritage, and they might combine that with a bit of shopping. So you get a lot of day visitors in those towns. And then finally, we get the multifunctional towns. And this is the sort of town that Homefirth is. So most towns are actually multifunctional. They're not seeing a big change in their footfall rates through the, through the year. So let's go back to Altrincham. Altrincham is a town near Trafford. And by 2010, it had the 30% store vacancies. So at the time, that was the largest vacancy rate for a town in the UK. And they didn't just think, well, we need to reinvent ourselves through more shopping, because they were right next door to the Trafford Centre. So that wasn't going to happen. What they did is they repositioned. They started a long journey of really looking at what local people needed. They needed to be better connected to Manchester, because Manchester drives the regional economy. So 25 million was invested into a, a new public transport hub. Over the years, Altrincham had lost a lot of important services, not just retail from the town centre. So they've rebuilt a hospital in the town. They've done all the normal things too. You know, they've improved the appearance, they've picked up the litter, they're doing something about car parking. But one of the, the best things that's happened is use, the use of flexible space, because all high streets and town centres need new entrants. They need people with lots of new ideas and new services and enthusiasm to reinvent the town. And in 2014, Nick and Jenny won the tender to run the market hall in Altrincham. And by 2015, they'd won the Observer's Food Monthly Market of the Year. The market has anchored a new evening economy, and it's brought a new sense of enthusiasm and confidence into the town. Not only have they repositioned, they've reinvented. Altringham has been reinvented as the modern market town. And that's a message that everyone can get behind. That's the rebranding. So they've repositioned, they've reinvented, they've rebranded. Altrin is the poster child of successful town centre regeneration. Actually, what's taken the most time and probably taken 20 years is the restructuring. So they've looked at how the leadership, the management and the decision making over that period. And all sorts of people are now involved in what makes the town successful. So property owners and landlords, the civic society, they all play a part in making Altrincham successful. And the danger is that when people visit from other towns, they don't see all those things that go on below the surface. You know, it's all those meetings and committees and arguments and local plans that, that make a place. And it's easy for other people to just focus on the success of the market hall and think, if only we had a market, <laughs> everything would be all right. 
Do you really, really have to understand what's going on under the surface of a town? And sometimes that might mean doing something counterintuitive. And just go back to Nigel in Wrexham for a minute. After getting involved in our research project, initial findings show that, surprisingly, Wrexham is still a shopping town, a serious shopping town. So it's not just attracting residents to shop, it's attracting people from a wider population. So the things that Nigel and his, um, you know, his, th that he's been working on with a team of people there to attract more shoppers into the town, absolutely been the right thing to do because it is still a shopping town. So Wrexham bucks the national footfall trends, which is declining. So it's, it's really good news. So what can I tell you to help you make your towns thrive? Well, first of all, a one-size-fits-all regeneration strategy is not the answer. Unfortunately, for the last 50 years, retail-led regeneration has been offered up as a solution to pretty much every town's problem. But it's people that make places. It's the Nigels, the Margarets, the Pennies, the Nicks, and the Jennies. And they don't do it alone. They do it through collaboration. And that's my role, too, as a professor, to do the type of research that's going to help them make better decisions in their place. The future may not be retail, but your town does have a future. And by finding out its footfall signature, it might help you find it. Thank you very much.